And I'm standing here with Kaylee, Sarah. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. So, good. So, what do you guys think about Can? Are you guys from Canada? Okay. What do you guys think about Canada's hate speech laws? Um, definitely good. A good thing, you know, protecting minorities for sure. sure. <laughs> like I agree. <laughs> what do you guys know about misgendering? Um, it's very prevalent in today's world. Sure, sure. So, how does that work? Do, is it like I identify as a woman, and if I tell you I identify as a woman today, you cannot call me a man, right? I agree with that, yes. Yeah. So what about the people who only believe in like two genders? Do you think they're still entitled to freedom of speech? Do you think that they don't deserve freedom of speech? What do you guys think? I think everyone's able to believe what they want, but some people should just know to keep to themselves mm -hmm. or know what's appropriate to say or not. Because obviously you can't change what someone thinks about something, but you can change their pers like you can try to change it. You know what I mean? But isn't it kind of like a freedom of speech issue? Like for instance, if I don't believe in the two million genders that there now are, right? Do you guys know that there's two million genders or like more? There's an infinite spectrum? Can I ask you a question? Sure. If like gender, right? It's how you identify yourself, right? Would you go up to her and say she's not Asian? Actually, that's a point of contention these days. Current social justice logic, right? There's actually articles from left-wing publications that say race is a social construct much like gender is so i could technically identify as an african-american woman do you see the slippery slope that's kind of what i'm trying to convey here but i think the issue is that people are not trying to identify as different things to f with people they just want to be have you ever heard of jessica yaniv no no okay let me tell you a little bit about jessica yaniv this is a transgender person right and they are basically using the shield of transgenderism to do a lot of not so good things. Um, they sued 16 uh, salons, immigrant salons specifically, um, because they wanted gender affirming care. They wanted the women to wax their male genitalia. And when the women refused, they took them to the BC Human Rights Tribunals and sued 16 of them, very specifically immigrant women, East Indian women, and East Asian women. Um, Jonathan Yanev, Jessica Yanev, sorry, uh, has actually posted numerous times about how this person does not like immigrants, especially those from Asia and e India, and is very specifically using the human rights tribunals to screw with people, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Jessica Yanev has also um, is also throwing an event, a pool party for teenage and underage people where they should be topless and parents are not allowed to come. Jessica Yanev also has hundreds of screenshots and um, accounts from young girls as young as 10 that he was hitting on on Facebook and there's screenshots all over the place and nobody can do anything about it because this person is using the shield of transgenderism and nobody can say anything because if you speak out about that you are committing a hate crime in but Canada. That's very ex that's a very extreme example. Also, sure, but it did happen. But back then people could use the um, umbrella and protection of white privilege to treat black people wrong. Mm -hmm. Was that okay? Well, what do you mean when you say white privilege? You mean like Jim Crow laws? You mean slavery? What are we talking about here? Just in general, in general yeah. because that was a social construct that people observed that white privilege was white privilege right. you can do whatever you want because you're white S straight people people who identify as man or woman and basically by the book people can they really judge what's going on because maybe 20 years from now we're going to look back and say wow that was really dumb that we were like Okay, so let me change kind of the spectrum then. If we're going to say that we're equal under the law and nobody should be disparaging anyone else, then why are we consistently on social media talking about white male fragility, for instance, or straight people fragility? There was actually a straight pride parade in Boston uh, this weekend, and the local Antifa chapter showed up and started beating people up, as usual. Do you think that's okay? No, I mean, should no we be... should be beating anyone up. Well, okay, but then let's look at, like, on social media with, like, the white male fragility thing and the constant attacks on white people. Is that all right? Like, uh, sometimes yeah. it is sometimes deserved it is. because there are still white males that feel very entitled to not even attack people, like, transgender people, but just, like, anyone that's not white male. Mm -hmm. So... 
Like, I think at the end why of are the they day, stuck in such? But if we're all equal, right? Why are we swinging the pendulum back the other way and attacking white men? No, no, no. It's not that at because all. Because they're not treating just, everyone else as equal. You have to look at it not as equality, as what's equitable. Who needs help to be brought up into a level playing field? Do you, do you understand? Mean like, do you mean equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity? I just mean like... In general. Like, in general. But we all have the same rights and you know opportunities under the law. I mean, what do you mean? Do you mean like okay. class issues or... No, but we do on paper have the same rights, but do people recognize that? Do people in positions of power like exercise that? No. I mean, they they do if you actually are caught discriminating against people you will either be sued in civil court or you would be dealt with with especially in canada no but look at like brock turner for example white male raped what three months in prison meanwhile there's african americans in prison 15 years for like like cannabis issues like how is that fair and that's a, like that's a product of society where there are people white who men are not can caught get up away yet with do you guys thing. think we live under a rape culture? In some ways, in some circumstances. Because the, statist the statistics, we actually prosecute rapists as much as we prosecute armed robbers. Would you guys say we lived under an armed robbery culture, for instance? Say that again? So, the statistics, if we, yeah. we actually prosecute rapists at the same level as um, armed robbers, do you think that we live under like an armed robbery culture? But armed, it's not like the same... It's still a crime, though. But will it's still will a, a bank crime. have emotional trauma if it's yeah. mugged? If I get mugged and somebody shoves a gun in my face, yeah, I think I'm going to have emotional trauma. Yeah, but then people are getting prosecuted, right? It's right. being dealt with, right? Rapists are also being prosecuted, though. Yeah, but I think the part of rape that is so prevalent and why people are so concerned of it in today's culture... Well, it's a disgusting crime. It's a disgusting crime, but also, especially in recent years, women have started to really speak out. Sure. The Me Too movement. Of course. Yeah. And this is a big issue that women are now finally starting to become okay with talking about. So can we delve into the Me Too movement for a second? So have you noticed that many of the accusations don't actually have any proof attached to them? Many a times it's actually done on social media. It's a court of social media, of the public, and the mob mentality of that public is to destroy someone's life without actually having any objective proof one way or the other. I think that's okay, the but worst possible way to look at the Me Too movement. How many... But there's been many circumstances of yeah, that that happened. You... Okay, how many verse, how many are real though? I don't know. We don't actually know either way. But that's kind of the issue here. You're innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. You don't have to prove your innocence. Someone else needs to prove your guilt. The prosecution's office, and with Title IX courts in the United States, at least, and universities, that's not how it works. A preponderance of evidence says 51% guilty, they'll expel you from college. If somebody accuses you of sexual assault, for instance, you cannot cross-examine the witness or the, the accuser. You cannot cross-examine them. You can't have a lawyer in the room. You can't defend yourself from an accusation. I think, I think the, just honestly, just based on this entire conversation so far, we need to look at it in a way, everything, everything that's going on in society today that's progressive, like trying to move things forward, bring people out to speak, you need to look at it in a way that this is helping someone. That woman on Twitter telling her story, hashtag me too, whatever, that's helping someone who's actually been raped but to it's speak also out. destroying someone's life if they out their person without any actual proof. That actually happened uh, just in the last few days. A woman named Zoe Quinn, who's a video game developer, uh, she accused a uh, male developer, Andy, ooh, I'll have to get his last name, but he was accused. There was no objective proof whatsoever. It happened a few years ago, no objective proof. He killed himself. He now has any, he has no way to defend himself one way or the other. There's the case of Armin Premji in the States where he, a girl grabbed his face in a bar, started making out with him, took him outside, was making vulgar motions behind his back, yada, 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 took him to her dorm room, took a selfie with him. Um, all this shit, signed him into her dorm room. They went upstairs and slept together. She then accused him of rape and, you know, the cops showed up, arrested him. The court system actually said verbatim that it was the woman who was the initiator and the aggressor in this case. Armin Premji was still expelled from school. So do you see that this can actually be a slippery slope in many ways? It can be a slippery slope, but how do you know what went on? Like, maybe she initiated it, but she's still able to say no in the end. Sure. Consent is very important, right? And they can say no at any point, but you guys do agree that you can't say no after the act has been done, right? I agree with that, yes. Okay.
Okay, I just wanted yeah. to get some ground yeah. rules here. Yeah. So, how do you think we can fix this then? I know this is good. This could turn into like a crazy long debate. I'm sure it could be that way, but. For final thoughts, how do you think we can kind of get to a consensus? Because much of the conservative right-wing backlash and male backlash indeed, and you guys know the Me Too movement has been very harsh on women in the workplace. Men no longer want to speak. As a matter of fact, I think it was over 60% of male managers do not want to be around women, period, in the workplace. How can we fix this? How do we kind of reach across the borders and have women um, who are very progressive feminists come and talk to these managers who feel like they're at risk because a woman's accusation can destroy their life? How do we kind of I think fix things? To Just for everyone to have an open mind. Okay. Honestly, like, I can't say what's right or wrong. I can just say my opinion. And that's all we're looking for. Yeah, so just as long as you're, you have an open mind, and as long as you're responding in a way which is respectful to the person and not trying to out them say actually this happened so you're wrong you know what i mean yeah. just have an open mind and speak to someone as another person not as like someone you're trying to get answers from okay do you have yeah. any final thoughts i say for men to stop raping women I in general well i think that would be wonderful if we could just tell people not to rape that's great but one thing i i i've had a big problem with with like the progressive movement is it's just tell men not to rape well, most men aren't going to rape, but a rapist is going to rape whether you tell him not to rape or not. It's the same reason, I mean, if someone's going to shoot you, he's going to shoot you regardless. No, yeah, it has nothing to do whether you tell him not to shoot people or not. No, but still, we're brought up in a society where, it, like, I have to worry about my safety walking down the street. Um, when, from even, like, becoming a teenager, there's dress codes at school. I can't show my shoulders because, God forbid, a boy sees my shoulders. It's like, am, am I supposed to not think that? I'm in danger yeah. if I it, do show my shoulders. Like, it, it, you're bred to think that to be scared, yeah. which sucks. And, like, it's not fair at all. So, I think that there needs to be an awareness that girls and boys are the same as long as you raise them the same and raise them to be respectful and treat people as people, not as other genders, whatever. Yeah, I think it also stems from, like, childhood, the way you were brought up. Um, in a lot of cultures, like, girls and guys aren't treated the same even as kids so in my culture indian culture we're treated very differently yeah so things like guys being given more freedom girls always being told to cover up like essentially teach boys not to rape not girls how to be, to be prevented to be prepared for how to cover up yeah, how to, how to, be, how like, to prepare for yeah. any event of a rape yeah, yeah. I like that. Come <laughs> on,